not did you win, not just only did you win your case, you won a seminal case before, before the U.S. Supreme Court that is supposed to change university admissions and potentially down the line other ways we factor race into situations forever. So what was that like? Yeah, and it's a victory for Asian American dignity. You know, it's a victory for equal opportunity for everybody. We knew how Harvard was discriminating against Asian Americans. They ranked them lowest on personality. Asians had the highest grades and the highest test scores out of any race, but they decided to rank them lowest on personality. That was inexcusable. It showed the level of discrimination. I'll tell you, we won, and Students for Fair Admissions in my organization, Colorist United, we won fair and square. Uh, and there are people at UNC right now that are really regretting uh, even filing this lawsuit. Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, John Pryor, for example, said that they spent $35 million on this lawsuit to lose. Why? You know, I think it's going to leave a lot of liberals and progressives wondering about the efficacy of their case. Hmm. Well, you're saying, because... You're saying he's mad that they fought, that they that they fought you? Yeah, he's mad that they fought us. They, they fought a losing case. Um, most Americans do not support race being used in the college admissions process. Where we support helping minority children is at the K-12 public education level, not at the college level. Elite colleges mm-hmm. should be about merit and admitting most qualified. Mm-hmm. But they haven't been. And you were so right in all of your allegations. And just let's just spend one second on this. I mean, the absolute insult of basically rejecting Asians because they factored in their lame personalities. That was the sweeping judgment that they were making at places like Harvard. Like, well, you could get in. You have perfect SATs. You have a 4.4. But your personality is so lame, you had to go. All these other people who just happen to be people of a certain racial group have much better personalities than you do. So they're coming in despite the fact that they're two standard deviations below you on the SAT. But that's what was happening. Yeah, and the truth is, the progressives that claim to be anti-racist are actually more racist and more racially conscious than we could ever think of. At the heart of this entire lawsuit was Harvard's mistaken belief that they don't want too many Asians at Harvard. Because if they eliminated race preferences in admissions, the percentage of whites would go up slightly, but the percentage of Asians would go from 20% to 43%. And Harvard did not want the percentage of Asians at their campus to get on 43%. Now we know why Asians would get into Harvard, at 43%, it's because they study twice as hard as the average American, twice as many hours as the average American. That's why. It's cultural. I mean, and this, but this is something you're not allowed to say, right? Because what it implies is that it's not cultural for certain other racial groups to apply themselves that much to their academics. But the truth is, it's not. It's not cultural as a rule for any other <laughs> uh, racial group, for the most part, to spend that many hours studying a day that that's just a truism. And until we actually get our arms around that, those numbers aren't going to change in terms of what the admissions would be if we just went on merit. Right, exactly. Harvard cared more about the racial, what their composition of the student body looked like than they cared about the actual merit of their institution. Now, the problem with that argument is, well, what do we as Americans, what do we believe should compromise, can, should constituent, could be a constituent of an elite institution The answer is it should be the most qualified students because those are the people that we trust to deliver the resources, the intellectual resources that are going to propel our country forward. So if Harvard continues to claim to be an elite institution, they need to admit the most intellectually elite people. They are compromising that by factors of, like you said, two standard deviations or more on the SAT, 273 points higher Asians had to get on the SAT to have the same chance of admission as a black person. That's inexcusable from the perspective of merit. What's crazy is Asians, of course, are a minority in this country as well. And so you would think they'd say, oh, we're 43% minority if if it wound up that Asians made up 43% of the Harvard incoming class. But you're the wrong kind of minority. That's what it boils down to. You're the wrong kind. Your past history in the United States of discrimination against you, the current attacks we see against Asians on the street from COVID forward that have made news over and over, none of that matters. It doesn't rate. It doesn't count. Uh, because you're the wrong kind of minority. The same could, could be said about our, our Jewish friends, that the trauma against them, eh, it's different. you know. They, and so it's just so infuriating because it's the same group that wants us to look at them as this inclusive, progressive, loving group. And all of us on the other side are just the haters. Right. 
And by the way, before somebody says, well, Asians make up 43% of the university, that's too much. Why is the NBA 75% black? Why is the construction industry 50% Hispanic? Why are restaurant management in New York City, why are they disproportionately Hispanic and Asian? Is it because of racism? Is it because of racism for these uh, certain preferred groups? No, it's because every cultural group or every group, whatever you want to call it, uh, prioritizes different things in life. That's what America is about. That's what true diversity is about. True diversity is when Americans are allowed to pursue whatever talents that they, their family, their group decides, prioritizes, and be rewarded on the basis of what they produce. Asians produce great intellectual output because they study really hard. But Asians, for example, are not very politically represented. That's because Asians have not prioritized political representation. That is, of course, hurting them right now as Biden produces an agenda that is explicitly anti-Asian. Their equity has built back better equity rationale completely ignores the plight of Asians. They only care about, quote unquote, underrepresented minorities, which does not include Asian Americans. Mm. I'm reminding our audience, it's called School of Woke. It's out tomorrow. You've got to help support Kenny by buying School of Woke. And you can figure out how this happened to us, the complete capture of the university system. So the big question, of course, in the wake of your victory is, what are they going to do? There's no way these universities are actually going to comply. Like, they'll have to do it to the letter. But they already said, and I know the chief justice says, well, I'm not looking for, to make this a, an end around our ruling. But we already already believe that you can write an essay about how you overcame discrimination because of your race. That's if it went if it went to like your character, you can write about it and they can consider it. But you can't just let somebody in because he checked the box that he's of a certain race. I don't know. That leads me to believe every single person of color is going to be writing all about their, you know, their racist past the, that they were subjected to and do an end around the ruling, notwithstanding what the chief wrote. Well, K-12 schools get their uh, get their memo from universities. So if universities say we prioritize victimhood ideology, then K-12 schools are going to incentivize their minority, the particularly their black students, to cater to victimhood ideology. But as I argue in School of Woke, this is the wrong way to teach American history. And this is the wrong way to teach black kids how to succeed. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.